All right, so in this one we're going to talk about uh, recursively defined sequences. And so when a sequence is recursively defined, that means that each term depends on either the previous term or the previous two terms or something like that. Um, so uh, if we want to find the first six, or six terms of the sequence defined recursively, so here the first term is one, the second term is one, and then the next term is the sum of the previous two. So f of n minus f, f sub n minus one plus f sub n minus two. So the first six terms. So f sub one is one that's given. f sub two is one that's given. f sub three would be f two plus f one. So that's one plus one, which is two. Then f sub four would be f sub three plus f sub two, so the previous two terms. So f sub three is two, and f sub one is one, so f sub four is three. And then fifth term would be f four plus f three, so f four is three, f three is two, so that would be five. And then f six would be f five, plus f4, so that would be 5 plus 3, which is 8. And so if we put these just kind of in a list like this, you can kind of see, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and then the next we'd have 5 plus 8 would be 13. So, um, so that's how the recursively works. Recursively means you always have... Um, the, some of the previous terms, one or more of the previous terms is involved in the formula. Uh, but what this also means is you can't get the 100th term without going through every other term um, up to that point. So we won't be, won't be doing that. So with, with the recursively defined, you're just kind of getting the first however many terms. All right, next we'll talk about uh, partial sums. So partial sums is just saying if we add up the first uh, four terms, say, or the first 10 terms um, of a sequence. So um, let's see what this looks like. So, and we use a capital S for this. So S1 would be just the first term. S2 would be the sum of the first two terms and so on. So find the first four partial sums. Uh, so we have one over to the n. And so obviously with, with the nth partial sum, um, you may or may not be able to write this easily. Um, probably you will though, if they if they ask for it, probably you will. But let's let's look at this. So S1 is just the same as A1. So that's one over two to the two, one over two uh n is one. So one one half. S2 would be S1 or A1 plus A2, which would be one fourth. So one half plus one fourth is three fourths. S3 would be one half plus one fourth plus one over two third, which would be one eighth. So now we have three over four plus one eighth. So when you do this, because you probably need a calculator for these, um, just take the previous one and add the, so don't. You don't really need to add all three of these terms. Just do three fourths plus one eighth just to save you a little bit of time. So that's seven eighths. Then S4 would be one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth now. So plug in four for N. We get one over two to the fourth, which is one sixteenth. And then you can put in seven eighths plus one sixteenth in the calculator. And uh, we get 15 sixteenths. And so now you can kind of see a pattern here. Uh, what is the pattern? So 2, 4, 8, 16. And then each numerator is one less than the denominator. So Sn seems like a logical guess. Um, numerator is just 2 to the 2 to the n. So two to the first, two squared, two third, two to the fourth. So numerator here would be two to the n. 
and then the numerator, sorry, denominator two to the n. The numerator is two to the n minus one. So it's just gonna be one less than that. Okay, so that's kind of what you're doing. And a lot of this um, in this first section is just kind of looking looking for a pattern. Um, so let's look at this one, sigma notation. Um, so sigma notation, this is just a, a notation for writing a sum of terms like this. Uh, so this symbol, of course, is a sigma. And so the way we read this, uh, sig sigma stands for sum. So sigma just equals sum. Um, so this is the sum from k equals 1 to n. And so k is the index. k is changing. Um, so this is the sum of the first k terms, or the first n terms of this sequence. Um, and k is called the index of summation. So let's look at how this works. So we have the sum from k equals 1 to 5 of k squared. So this would be 1 squared. So we start with this one, work our way up to this one, plus 2 squared, plus 3 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 5 squared. And uh, let's see what we get. So 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 is 55. All right. Um, this one, so here we go from j equals 3 up to 5, 1 over j, so that would be 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. And I'll let you, I'll let you add that. We won't put that in the calculator. Um, and then next one, we have k equals 5 up to 10. And so here we just have k. So this, this would just be 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 equals whatever it equals. Um, probably don't put this in the answer in the sign. Uh, and then the last one, we have the sum from i equals 1 up to 6 of 2. And so now there's no index in the formula. So here we had a k, here we had a j. Um, so this would just be 2 plus 2 plus 2 six times. And of course, we probably do that in our head. Uh, that would just be 12. OK. Um, all right, so that that's it for uh, section 12.1. Um, if you're not comfortable with this notation yet, the summation notation, uh, make sure you work on that because that may that may be new, um, depending on your your background. But um, probably want to make sure you're used to that, especially if you're going to go into uh, Calc two. This this kind of notation comes up a lot in Calculus two, so um, good good idea to get familiar with it now.